Welcome to Crosswinds, where the relevance of God intersects with the reality of this world. Here at Crosswinds, we're on a journey to discover who God created us to be. And one of the foremost aspects of being a Christ follower is activating the wisdom that has been given us from the Lord. Now, this is the Father's Day weekend. And I know that men, in fact, all people like frank, straight talk discussion. So that's what we're going to do this weekend. We, and because we live in unprecedented times within a world that is struggling to find its way. But through it all, God has a plan. We have the mind of Christ and we have his work at our disposal. And the Lord wants us to be intelligent in our actions, especially as we talk about certain things in our financial lives. Well, we're in a time of unprecedented inflation for many of you who are watching. Now at my age, and I'm 67 while we're recording this, is I have been through inflationary times before, but some of you have never seen it like it is right now. And I'm here to tell you that God is on the throne. He knows what inflation is all about and he's got us covered, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't be intelligent. And that's what this whole thing is about. So before we go any farther, I want to pray with you. And so let's do that now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would give us great wisdom. Your word says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives generously without finding fault and will be given him. And that's what we do now, Lord. We need wisdom on how to speak, how to talk, and how to understand. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I got to tell you that a couple of months ago, my wife and I went down to Las Vegas and uh, we were just looking for a great place to eat and we had done some work on uh, Google and you know, best places to eat in Las Vegas and we, we came across this thing that best places to eat Asian food in Las Vegas. So they have a place called Chinatown. We had never been there. So we went down we were looking for pho and we found this pho place and I mean the lines were out the door 40 people long and we thought well we got to get in this line so we got in the line and and it took us an hour and a half to get in and it was great we had great food and then we come out from there and we started walking up and down the streets of chinatown there and and we saw this place that said reflexology now some of you might have seen it it's where they have a picture of a foot or two feet and they tell you if you touch here or touch there and you know what, Janet? She says, you want to do this? I said, yeah, why not? We didn't have anything else to do. So we stepped in there and, and this lady, oh, hi. And, and I said, well, do you have any room? Yeah, yeah, we can take you. Come on, come on. And, and so we get signed up and she says to me, do you want the works? Well, I thought she meant the works in my feet in reflexology. I had no idea what the works meant but i said yeah janet says i want the works so we said we want the works so they brought my wife and i and we uh, they had us in these tables and they said go down to your underwear we got down to our underwear and we were sitting while i was on one table and janet was in the other next to each other with a gap there and overhead what we saw was these bars i didn't know what they were and they brought out this big pot of water they put our feet in the water and i thought oh man this is nice and they washed their feet and did this and and then before you know it, they said, get on your, in, on your stomach. And we laid down and this lady's massaging, doing this. And, and I still don't know what the works are. And all of a sudden I felt her crawling on me, literally climbing on me. I could feel her knees and her feet and she stood up on the bed. And what I figured out at that moment in time was what those bars were all about because she held on to that bar and gave me a massage with her feet up and down all over down the legs and her feet were like hands and doing this and crunching and stepping and man i mean we were worked every which way but loose and we finally get done and i mean I, i'm just what in the world and janet looks at me and i look at her and get our clothes on and we walk out to pay and and lady said, how was it? And I said, oh, it was great. And 
And you know what? It was great. I felt like a million bucks. Now here's what I thought about that experience and here's what I think about the Lord. I said, you know what? When we came in here, what we got wasn't what we wanted, but what we did get from them was everything we needed. Hold on, listen up. What we got was not what we wanted, but we received was exactly what we needed. And that's the way it is with the Lord. What we get many times is not what we want, but what we receive is exactly what we need. If I haven't met you yet, my name is Pastor Pete, and today we wanna talk about let's get it right. In 1 Chronicles 12, 32, it says from Issachar, men who understood the times and who knew what Israel should do. I know that was real quick on you, but David was looking for leaders and from Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, which is a state, like we would say the United States from California or uh, Arizona or whatever, from Issachar, men who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. There were 200 chiefs with all their relatives under their commands. So they understood what was going on like today. We are in inflationary times, but there are people who understand that and know what to do. Well, we'll get back to it in a minute. Second Corinthians 9, 6 through 11 says this. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each one should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, having at all times, having all you need, you will abound in every good work. For it is written, he has scattered his gifts to the poor and his righteousness endures forever. And listen to this. And he who gives seed to the sower and bread for food shall also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness and you will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will bring thanksgiving to the Lord. See, first of all, what we do matters. What we do, our actions matter. Our supply, how much the Lord brings directly to us, is directly affected by the seed that we, be, that we sow. It's up to us. And you need to know that we are sowing financially all the time. We're either sowing bad seed or we're sowing good seed. All the time, we're sowing. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we'll also reap. And so our supply, the Bible says, my God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So our supply is directly affected by the seed that we sow. Do not take this lightly, church. People who are watching, do not take this, take this lightly. For in this moments that we live, if ever we needed to reap and sow from the Lord, our Savior, it is now. Second of all, God supplies, and he is not bound by the world's situations. See, God's not bound by inflation. God knew exactly where we would be today. If you are a child of the Lord, he knows exactly where you stand. He knows everybody where they stand, but if you're a child of the Lord, he cares about you. If you haven't accepted Christ yet, I'm gonna give you that opportunity in about 10 minutes. But for now, if you are under the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord has your life in his hands. His hands. And in the situations that we live, the answer is there. See, there are people who have the answers. But we've got to seek them out, just like the scripture that we talked about, David finding the men of Issachar who what? Knew the times, could understand the times, and knew what needed to be done. When it comes to this great inflation, there are people that know what this is all about, and they know exactly what needs to be done. And our job is to seek the Lord. Our job is to walk in the promises of the Lord. Our job is to sow good seed. Our job is to build a pathway to, to make sure that the road from the supply is open and wide. And sometimes it encompasses us in finding the people that have the answers. So we need to seek them out. 
Here's what I know about people that have answers. They don't want to give you the answers if they realize you're not working at what it takes to receive the answers. Whoops, stop right there so you can fully understand. There are people that have the answers today. People that God has ordained to come into your life. People that God has placed just for you. But they will not give you what you need if they don't believe you're wanting to receive. They won't give you what you need if they don't believe you're wanting to receive. So let's put ourselves into a spot. First of all, realizing what we do that matters, that our supply is affected by the seed that we sow. So let's sow good seed. Understanding that too, that God supplies and he is not bound by anything in this world. He's not bound by what the government does. He's not bound by what your state does. He's not bound by the city. He's not bound by your family members. He is not bound by anything. God has the answers. Thirdly, faith activates the seed that we have sown. Jesus said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. That's in Matthew 9, 29. He did not say according to your need. Did you hear that? Jesus said, according to your faith. He didn't say according to your need. We know that our God should supply our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But we're talking about moments of faith where we need to have the answer, where we need the supply. We don't just need somebody telling us it's going to be all right. We need somebody placing into us the provision to know that that's what's going to carry us through. Maybe that provision is a raise. Maybe that provision is a different job. Maybe that provision is somebody coming and giving you a piece of vital information. Maybe that provision is intelligence that you never saw before. Maybe that provision is a divine moment where the Lord has stepped into your life with someone that's going to take you by the hand and walk you into victory. But what activates that seed is my faith. And my faith is shown by my works. James said it this way. James, who is Jesus' brother, he said, faith without works is dead. And when it comes to your generosity, when it comes to finance, faith without works is dead. You cannot stingy your way into blessing. See, generosity, number four, proves your faith. This is a straight forward with no room for discussion. I know that's tough to say, but generosity proves faith. Faith without works is dead. According to your faith, be it unto you. He who sows seed to the sower and bread for food shall also supply and increase your store of seed and enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. Remember what we read. He who sows sparingly will reap what? Sparingly. He who sows, sows generously will reap generously. And with the measure you give, it will be measured unto you, Luke 6, 38 says. So my challenge to you today is to realize that you might hear a lot of bad news going on. You might experience a lot of bad things. And for all of you, if you're like me, every day I drive by, I think I can count six fuel stations, gas stations, and every one of those has a marquee that tells me how much their fuel is. And almost on a weekly basis, every one of those marquees are going up and up and up and up. And you go to the restaurant and the food is going up and up. And I get my power bill and the gas is going up and up. And you go get a tire and it's going up and up. And I'm not spelling doom. I'm saying that if there's ever a time where we need to push into the Lord, it's now. If there's ever a time we need to build our faith, build ourselves up in the most holy faith, it is now. For with the measure you use, it'll be measured back unto you. Well, boy, I, I hope you've been encouraged, but remember, I'm bringing it back now to the massage that I got in, in that place in Las Vegas. I didn't get what I wanted, but I got exactly what I needed. And maybe today, you didn't receive exactly what you wanted. You were hoping that it would just be hunky-dory. But I know you got what you needed because the Lord will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. What? By Christ Jesus. And so finally, I want to say this. We're not to be ignorant that, you know, we're not going to put our heads in the sand and say, oh, it's, it's not bad out there. We had to put our heads in the sand and say, oh, 
it, it's all going to be all right. It is going to be all right. But we stare down inflation. We don't hide from it. We stare down possible recession. We don't run from it because you can't run. We stare down lack and we say, lack, you have no authority within me. Your authority is gone. I am a child of the living God. I, I, I love this. That it says in the book of 1 John, how wonderful it is to know that we have been given the beauty and the glory of God within us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. There's victory in the name of Jesus. There's abundance in the name of Jesus. There's wonder in the name of Jesus. There's overwhelming supply in the name of Jesus. See, we stare it down. We stare down inflation, recession, and lack through knowledge and obedience to the word of God. At just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we would be called the children of the living God. And so I challenge you today to stop, put your armor of God on you and become excited once again to be a giver, to be a tither, to be someone who sows seed and realize that God can do more from you, for you and God can do more for me than I can ever do for myself. But if God is for us, listen up church and we're done, who can be against us? Hmm. Well, remember about 10 minutes ago, I, I said that if you didn't have the Lord Jesus in your heart, maybe you're watching this for the first time and, and something's just going on inside your gut, you just got butterflies in your heart, I believe that's the Lord speaking to you. And if you die tonight at this moment in time, you don't know if you're going to go to heaven or hell. I want to help you get over that thought process. The Bible says that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by him. And so I challenge you today to give your heart to the Lord Jesus. There is no other name given to men by which we may be saved, and that is the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue is confessed that he is Lord and Savior. So if you're watching and you want to give your heart to the Lord today, please just blink at the camera right now or blink at your phone. Or how about this? Blink at your YouTube. And if you did that, I want to tell you something. The Lord loves you and and this is your moment. The blinking isn't the magic wand. It's just a connection with your own spirit saying, okay, Pete, I'm using my own name. Okay, Pete, this is the time. I feel the Lord calling me. So I'd like you to repeat this simple prayer after me. If you're by yourself, say it out loud. If you're with somebody and you don't feel comfortable, just say it in your mind. And so here it goes. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I ask you to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. I believe you died for me and I believe you rose again. And with your help, from this day forward, I will live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, click on the links in the description below and begin to walk in faith knowing that God has a plan for you. And hey, one more thing. If this sermon has touched you today, make sure to share the message on your social media. Let's spread the good news of God. Also, be sure to support us on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. And, and, and maybe you have a friend that you've been talking to and, and they're struggling financially or they're struggling because they're fearful. This is a perfect sermon to share with them. Just let them know. Say, hey, I've been listening to this guy and you can catch him on YouTube under Crosswinds. So, man, I challenge you, just be a conduit for others to get connected to the things of God. Hey, let me tell you this. Some great things are going to happen this summer. And one of them is that we are going to have a night of worship and prayer and praise. It's going to be coming on Wednesdays. We're going to do that three times this summer, one in June, July, and August. Keep watching on all of our pages for advertisements on this. Pastor Dave's going to lead them, and the worship team's going to be there. It's going to be great. So I challenge you to do that. Also, Crosswinds is holding a water park day, Thursday, July 7th at 11 a.m. Sign up to uh, get available tickets, and for more information, click on the link below. Giving here at Crosswinds is fabulous. 
because I want to let you know that it's like sowing seed. We talked about it today. It's seed that you sow into the Holy Spirit ground, and it is watered, and a great harvest happens. You give online at crosswindsnv.org. You can text to give at 84321. Mobile giving app is Secure Give, and in-service giving, and you can even mail it to 2100 El Rancho Drive, Sparks, Nevada, 89431. I trust God has blessed you. And as always, would you say it out loud with me, no matter if you're in the car, if you're at your home, or maybe you're sitting out in a park or something. Let's declare God's truth over our lives. I am blessed. I have divine favor. I am not alone. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I put my trust in the Lord. I walk in the promises of God's holy word because God has a miracle for me. And remember, Crosswinds, we are better together. God bless you.